Today I am going to give you six hacks for how to deal with tummy bugs naturally. Not only is the norovirus going around our area, but just also general purpose, like 24 hour tummy bugs have also been going around. It just seems like everybody is getting sick and we have not been immune. Of course, having a four year old who's in preschool, we're gonna get exposed. Like there is no way around that. We are just going to get exposed to every single little thing that's going around. And he came home last week with the tummy bug. And I'll spare you the details, but he was definitely sick to his stomach, poor little guy. In dealing with that, I was feeling inspired to make this video on six hacks for dealing with tummy bugs with adults and kids and how to prevent it and how to treat it mostly naturally. Now before I talk about these hacks, I just want to mention that last year I made a video during cold and flu season about our immune blasting regimen and it is what we do. It's like mostly natural items that we do to prevent a lot of sickness or to reduce the severity a lot of the bugs that are going around and we've had quite a bit of success with that. We did have one respiratory bug this year and you know lots of little colds and that kind of thing but so far, knock on wood, <laughs> we have managed to keep a lot of the sickness down to a dull roar this year. And so I'm going to link that video here of what we do to really boost our immune systems naturally. And that is definitely one of the things that I think helps with tummy bugs as well. So be sure to check that video. So let's get into these hacks. Hack number one, hygiene, hygiene, hygiene. I feel like this is a extremely obvious common sense one, but you'd be surprised how many people don't implement this one. <laughs> um, washing your hands, it's so, so basic. You'd be surprised like how many people I see in public restrooms not washing their hands or not really washing them, just rinsing them off or, you know, not really doing a very thorough job. <laughs> Um, and I feel like this is such a basic, basic thing that we can do to prevent the spread of things like yucky tummy viruses. Now, you don't want to use antibacterial soap. This is probably a video I can make in a, on another day, but there have been lots of studies that like antibiotics, antibacterial soaps have started building resistance to bacteria and it is cr starting to breed superbugs just like antibiotics. You really don't want to be using antibacterial soap, using regular soap, does the trick, it gets the germs off, but without breeding superbugs, because we don't want to be doing that. You just want to, you know, rub your hands fronts and backs. With my kids, I always say fronts and backs and in-betweens. I heard somebody say that once. I don't even remember where I heard that, but it's just a little adage that I do with my kids, and they always remember that fronts and backs and in-betweens. And um, you want to do it for 15 to 20 seconds, especially if you know you have been in a public place, you've been exposed maybe to somebody who's been sick, you might wanna be a little more thorough and do the full 15 to 20 seconds. Hot water, soap, as hot as you can stand it. And you also wanna get under your fingernails. This is something that a lot of people don't realize is you wanna be getting under those fingernails. And another way you can do it is like going like this and that gets under your fingernails as well. This is just basic, you guys. Wash your hands, wash, wash, wash your hands. And this is just, an important thing to teach to our kids as well, and it's just an important habit to get them in, not only after they go to the bathroom, obviously, but if you have been out in public, out and about, every time when we walk in through the door after we've come home from somewhere, we always have a rule of washing our hands. And I do carry around hand sanitizer. I am careful to use it sparingly because I've read that that also has had some of the same effects as antibacterial soap and that it can breed superbugs if you use it too much. But if we have been in a really, really germy place and my kids have had their hands all over, you know, like the Costco shopping cart, something like that, I will use hand sanitizer on them right when we get back in the car. Um, so just basic, basic stuff. This is an ongoing process and kids are not going to learn this right away, but starting to teach them the importance of not touching their face all the time, you know, not putting their hands in their mouth and their nose, that kind of thing, which I know, I know, little kids are gonna do that anyway, <laughs> but it's important to at least start talking to them about that kind of thing. I don't even know if you would 
include this in the hygiene, but I will anyway. But sometimes just avoiding really public places when you know that there has been an outbreak of something or if you know something is going around. Us adults, like, we know how to do proper hygiene and that kind of thing, and going out in public isn't as big of a deal. We know how to wash our hands well. But oftentimes, if I know that there is, like, right now, the norovirus going around, I haven't been taking my kids to, like, super, super public places or places where there are, like, you know, really big concentrations of kids, like the Children's Museum or the Trampoline Park, you know, things like that, until I know that it's been cleared for a couple weeks and then we go back to doing those things. I guess that's hygiene, but just avoiding where you know it's likely to contract one of those things. All right, hack number two is probiotics. And I cannot emphasize this one enough, but the importance of having a really strong, healthy gut flora. And this is something that you just do preventatively on a regular basis. Fermented foods is something that we try to incorporate on an almost daily basis into our diet, into our kids' diet. The two main sources of naturally fermented probiotics that we get are yogurt and kefir, or some people call it kefir. I think the traditional way is to call it kefir. But I actually have some goat kefir right here. And you can buy this stuff in the store. You can get goat, you can get cow. And the most economic way is to make it yourself. And that's actually, some, I'm not doing it right now, but I have in the past for a long time. You can get a little culture and you put it into milk, put it on your counter, and in two days you have kefir. And then you just store it in your fridge and you put it in smoothies or eat it straight or whatever you want to do. And this is definitely one of the ways that we keep our guts having a regular dose of probiotics. And the idea behind this is when you have your guts full of the really good bacteria, that's going to fight off the bad bacteria for you. So when a bad invader, you know, virus or bacteria or whatever enters your GI tract, all of the all of those really good bacteria are there to attack it. It's basically survival of the fittest. So if you don't have very good gut flora going on, then when an invader comes in, it's, there's nothing to attack it. And so it just takes over and that can make you really, really sick. And it can make the severity of your sickness even more as well. So I think this is something that has really made a difference for us. Even though we have had low level tummy bugs that we've been exposed to, they have not been that severe at all. They've only, you know, been a day or two and they're not, they're definitely not severe. Like none of us have gotten to the point of getting dehydrated, knock on wood. And I just have to think that it's because we have really, really worked hard on having really strong gut flora. So milk kefir is one way you can get it. We also make water kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut if you want to make your own, which I've actually done. And everybody's like, ew, sauerkraut. <laughs> but it actually, when you make your own, it tastes like 10 zillion times better than the stuff you get in the store. It's, it's surprisingly good, actually. <laughs> so, you know, there are so many ways that you can ferment things. If you want a resource for ideas for how to ferment things and recipes and where you can get um, cultures for fermentation and that kind of thing, I've used the website Cultures for Health. I'll link them down below if you want to check them out. And they are an amazing resource. I think they even have a YouTube channel with tutorials. And also my friend Katie over at Katie Cooks and Crafts. She does a lot of fermentation recipes. So I definitely encourage you to go on over to her channel and check out all of her fermentation recipes because she has amazing stuff that she makes. And these are all ways to get a diverse variety of different strains of bacteria, good bacteria into your gut. Because the more variety of good bacteria you have in there, the more protected your gut will be against bad bacteria and virus invaders that come in. So if you can't tolerate dairy, like I said, you can do it, you know, fermented vegetables. You can even make coconut kefir, which I have made before using the, the milk culture that we have. Um, I actually talked about that in one of my Whole30 videos because I was making that for a while. Let's see if I can find that video and link it here when I was talking about making coconut kefir because that's a really good way to get a lot of the same um, culture that you would get in a regular milk kefir, but you make it with coconut milk. So 
um, it's dairy free. Anyway, another option is to get a really high quality probiotic. And this is one that I've got, it's called Transformation. Let's see if I can look it up here. I'm not sure if you can get this on Amazon or not. This was actually a prescription level probiotic that our nurse practitioner prescribed to me. Just because I have IBS, as I've talked about in some of my previous videos, um, I just wanted to have that extra supplementation, especially since I myself am trying to not have too much dairy right now. So I just wanted to have that extra boost. And I asked her for a really high quality one. And so she prescribed this one. It's definitely something you can ask your doctor about. You probably walk into a super supplements or a natural food store and ask the employees there, what is one of the highest quality probiotics that you have here? You know, one that is effective at getting down into your intestines too, because some of them, if they're not very high quality, they just all get destroyed by your stomach acid before they even get to your intestines. So, and also another thing to look for in a probiotic supplement is a really big variety of strains of bacteria. The more strains of bacteria there are, the better. So this stuff is literally charcoal. And the idea behind it is that it actually absorbs toxins that are in your stomach and it helps flush them right on through. And they actually use this stuff in hospitals when there have been like overdoses um, or if there's poisoning, that kind of thing, they actually use charcoal. I have read that this is something that works for bacteria and some viruses as well. So, I mean, you can use this if you get food poisoning as well. I have been swearing by this stuff. It's not 100% foolproof. It's not, you know, 100% going to prevent you from getting a tummy bug. But um, when we know we've been exposed to one, we take these. Now, it's like you take two capsules, you know, every few hours you know, with meals or after meals or whatever. So if you know you've been exposed, you can take this stuff preventatively for a few days. And if you do actually get the bug, you can take this stuff to help reduce the severity of it and, you know, help that bug move its way on through a little more efficiently. As an adult, you can just, you know, take these capsules. The way I do it with my kids is I actually open one of these capsules into one of their sippy cups full of water, and I call it their medicine water. <laughs> so if they have a tummy ache, they know that I give them medicine water. Now beware, it is very messy to do this, so you wanna do it over a sink or something because it can make a black mess. But I just let them keep it in their bed, and sometimes they get like little drops of it on their sheets and stuff, but it washes right out in the wash. So yeah, I just give it to them via water. If they actually do get the bug, um, I give them two capsules. I've also heard other people saying they mix it into other things like applesauce or into, you know, something like that. But you have to be aware that it makes things, you know, it's really black and it changes the color of things. So, you know, do what works best for your kids. Disclaimer is you definitely don't want to take this stuff like daily on a regular basis long term because over time it actually can prevent the absorption of nutrients so you definitely don't want that long term um, but in the short term when you know you've been exposed to something and you are preventing something or you actually have a bug and you are using it to help you get over that bug it's definitely fine for a short term use at least from what I have read now of course before taking any supplement I am no doctor I am no professional so absolutely ask your doctor before you take something like that. But this has just been our experience and what I have read via my research and whatnot, but be sure to verify that with your doctor before taking any kind of supplement. Number four, electrolytes. Now, if you do end up down and out with a tummy bug, this is something that is so important. It is so easy to get dehydrated if you are vomiting and have diarrhea. And so you really want to focus on rehydrating yourself, but you wanna do it really carefully. A hack that I have heard is to sip an electrolyte drink. I mean, it's not even like a full gulp if you've been vomiting. You definitely want just tiny, tiny little sips every 15 minutes. Like just, I remember even when I had a tummy bug when I was pregnant last time, 
Um, I talked with my midwife. This is exactly what she suggested to me, and this is where I first learned about this. Um, but just enough to coat your mouth and not even a huge gulp, but just do that every 15 minutes um, because if you put too much in your stomach, you're just going to keep getting sick. So this is a way to hydrate yourself without triggering the cycle to keep going, if that makes sense. Another way to do that is to suck on ice chips or to have like an electrolyte popsicle. And I know that like they make Pedialyte popsicles and that kind of thing, but I wanted to show you the kinds of na more natural electrolytes that we use in our family and how you can make your own popsicles actually. For us adults, we use these Noon tabs. Let's see if I can get it to N-U-U-N. And you can get these different flavors. This one is goji berry and green tea. And this one would probably be really good for if you have a tummy bug because it's tangerine and ginger and ginger really helps with nausea and that kind of thing. Instead of doing like Gatorade or, you know, Powerade, something that's full of sugar, we prefer to do these. So you just drop one of these in water and let it dissolve. And um, it has a really uh, like fruity kind of flavor. It tastes pretty good. And I believe it's stevia sweetened, so there's no sugar in it. Um, but you have to get the natural version. They also have noon that are not the natural version. I'm not sure the difference, like maybe those have sugar and these don't, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. So you can use that to sip on if you're sick. And then you can also use that water to make popsicles. So you just, you know, put one of these things in a glass of water and then pour it into, you know, a popsicle dish or an ice, ice tray, whatever, however you want to consume the ice. You can do it that way and when you are sucking on ice it assures that you will not be drinking too much too fast but it's still hydrating you. I guess this is a really effective hack for kids as well because um, sometimes they don't have the self-control to just drink a tiny little bit and if they're working on a popsicle then it slows them down. Another thing that you can add to your little electrolyte solution before you put it in an ice tray is just to add a couple of these capsules of activated charcoal as well. Just open them up and add them into your glass and stir everything up and then pour those into your popsicle trays. So that's just another way to get in electrolytes and activated charcoal all at once. Lots of ways to go about it. Electrolytes are actually salts because when you are losing all that fluid, your body loses those electrolytes as well, and it's so important to replace them. Um, straight up water is not usually enough, like your body needs the electrolytes to absorb that water and use it properly. On a cellular level, it needs those electrolytes to properly utilize water in your body. So electrolytes, electrolytes, so important for rehydration. So for, the, for us adults, we use the noon tabs for the electrolytes for our kids. I use these little remedies and I'm pretty sure that you can just get this at the drugstore. I believe that's where I got this and it is a probiotic plus electrolytes. So like this is everything that you want for helping to heal those little guts um, because it helps replace those good bacteria and helps get over the bug faster by putting that good bacteria back in their guts and it replaces their electrolytes at the same time. Um, so you just, it's a powder that you just mix into water and you can put it in their sippy cups and have them take sips of that as well. You can also do the popsicle hack with this solution as well. So I really liked this for the kids especially. Hack number five has to do with cleaning up after little kids who don't necessarily know how to deal with a tummy bug. So if you guys have little kids, you have probably experienced at some point that they have been sick to their stomachs and they just don't know how to deal with it. And it is a mess. It is a nasty, disgusting mess. <laughs> so I have a couple of hacks that I have learned the hard way through experience now with two kids, especially if they're sick at night, how to deal with this. These are a couple of things that are worthwhile investing and having in your linen closet. And one of these is a waterproof pad. Actually, I got like five or six of these. This is something that I actually had a friend give to me when I was pregnant the first time around. She said, Amanda, Having little kids is messy. Life is going to be messy. You don't know when you're gonna need these, but you will find a use for these. <laughs> and she was right. <laughs> these are actually like 
the underpads that they use at like nursing homes and that kind of thing. I know it sounds a little gross, but like they're so functional. They're like cloth on one side and they're waterproof on the other side. So what I do is once my kids have been sick once, I put one of these in their bed, um, like under their pillow, under their body. So if they get sick again, I don't have to change their entire bedding a second time around. It's just changing this instead of the whole darn fitted sheet each time. It's nice because it is cloth, so it feels soft enough for them to sleep on, but it is so, so much easier for cleanup. Similarly, it is also wise to get some of these little under pads as well, the disposable kind. You know, this is just the kind that they use in hospitals, that kind of thing. I'm sure you've seen them. And you can get all of these things on Amazon, so I will find the links for these and link them down below if you want to order some to have in your house as well. I can't tell you the number of times that both of these things have come in handy, especially when it comes to tummy bugs. So I put one of these on the floor surrounding my kid's crib or around their bed so that if some of the mess happens to escape the bed and get on the floor, then this happens to be protecting your carpet underneath. <laughs> so that has also come in handy a couple of times. It is also good just to have a couple of changes of sheets and extra blankets to put on your kid's bed, that kind of thing, because that will be necessary. <laughs> and of course, this one, I mean, everybody knows this. Once they get a little bit older, like my son is four now and he's starting to understand this concept now of, you know, keeping a bowl by their bed and if they need it, it's right there. Um, once they get old enough to understand that, it's so, so glorious. <laughs> and finally, hack number six, and that is another common sense, obvious, obvious one, but I think a lot of people don't fully understand the extent of it, <laughs> but that is disinfecting. Now this is actually one thing that I don't use natural cleaners for. When it comes to, especially like I've been reading about the norovirus, even things like Clorox wipes are not going to kill it, or the natural remedies, that kind of thing. It is a potent, nasty, strong virus, and the more natural things, even like the Clorox wipes and standard surface cleaners, that kind of thing, they aren't going to kill the virus. And really the only thing that's going to is bleach. So I really don't like using bleach very often in my house, but if we have a tummy bug in particular, especially when it's something like the norovirus, you gotta use bleach because that is the only thing that is going to actually kill the virus. Tummy bugs, especially viruses, are spread mostly um, via hands hand wash, wash those hands people, and surfaces. Anything that has had any sort of bodily fluid, touch it. <laughs> so um, the most important thing, it's not airborne, it's spread through surfaces. So you really, really, really want to be disinfecting those surfaces with bleach if you can. Now obviously you can't with, you know, things like carpet and things like that, but you know, bathrooms, hardwood floors, that kind of thing. You definitely want to use a bleach solution. And I just keep a big thing of Clorox and I bought a couple of standard, you know, plastic spray bottles and I label them bleach so we know that's what it is. And I use it, like this is like the main thing that I use bleach for. There are very few other things that I'll actually use it because it is a really harsh, harsh chemical. But in this case, I think that it is necessary. That is important. So be sure to clean all of those surfaces that have had any kind of exposure, even any surfaces that the sick person has touched with their hands, especially little kids because, you know, their hygiene just isn't as good as adults. <laughs> so be sure to clean those surfaces where they've been. And that really, really helps prevent the spread of it, especially if you're trying to prevent it spreading from one of your kids to another kid. <laughs> this is one way to do it. Quarantine the one kid and clean everything else where the other kid is hanging out. Anyway, those are my six hacks for how to deal with tummy bugs naturally and how to prevent them and how to treat them. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you guys have any other hacks, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I am all about learning how to deal with this because I don't know about you, but for me, like tummy bugs are like the worst, 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 worst kind of sickness. Preventing and 
treating effectively as possible is something that is important to me. If you thought this video was helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that little bell next to the subscribe button if you want to see future videos from me as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.